Could this mini astro computer be about to change the face of astrophotography, as it finally allows users to operate their entire setup from the comfort of their mobile device? Meet the Challenger, the soon to be released TubeTech Astro Station. In order to claim the title as the ultimate smart device for astrophotographers, it must supersede the undefeated champion, the ASI Air. Six years on from the release of its first model, the ASI Air Plus is still the unrivaled go-to portable Astro computer. This thing is fantastic. But it suffers from one nauseating flaw, and that is it only cooperates with equipment produced by the same brand, ZWO. So you'd expect that this tiny device was going to be dead in the waters before it even had a chance. Except, ZWO gear is actually really good, and they offer lots of different choices, especially when it comes to cameras. To clarify, you can use whatever telescope and whatever mount you like with the ASI Air, which are two out of three of the main aspects, but you must use their specific equipment to image, to guide, to focus, and to filter, which can be extremely restrictive. Which is what brings us to where we are today. The Astro Station is offering us the keys to the kingdom, complete flexibility when it comes to imaging our night sky. But will that be enough to overthrow the king? Let's find out. I'm Damon Scotting, and this is Astronomical. So here is a side-by-side -side comparison of what each of the interfaces look like for the Astro Station on the left and the ASI Air on the right. The ZWO ASI Air hasn't changed too much over the years, and that's likely due to the fact that if it isn't broke, don't try and fix it. So I'm going to go through each of the corresponding tabs for these mini computers, starting with the main camera. Now for the Astro Station, I'm using the TubeTech ATR 2600C, whilst for the ASI Air, I'm using the ZWO ASI 2600MC Duo. The key difference between the two being that the ASI Duo camera features a second sensor that can be used as your guiding camera. The TubeTech camera has a lot more flexibility in terms of adjusting the imaging settings, which the Astro Station is aware of. It's also able to cool all the way down to negative 10 degrees in less than 30 seconds, whilst the ASI generally takes 5 minutes plus. Then moving on to the guiding tab, I'm just going to quickly disconnect the TubeTech camera as the main and reconnect it as the guiding. We see a very similar set of options for both sets of cameras. I think the ASI Air does a good job in not overloading the user with all of the options at once. You'll notice this as a running theme throughout these tabs. Then we have the mount. Now the ASI Air does allow all types of mounts, providing you with plenty of options. Each of their star libraries are very similarly designed, although one absolutely huge and crucial element that the TubeTech has not integrated it seems is a sky atlas. This is incredibly useful as it allows you to frame your deep sky objects and even accurately plot out mosaic shots. Although the interface designs so far have been very level, the lack of a sky atlas certainly puts the ASI Air in the lead. But of course, the biggest discussion point as to why the Astro Station may be the better alternative becomes quickly apparent once again as we move on to the filter wheel and autofocuser tabs. The ASI Air only allows the ZWO filter wheel whilst the Astro Station allows practically every filter wheel ever made. I don't really use filters, so this tab didn't affect me too much, but certainly the autofocuser tab does. ZWO only allows their electronic autofocuser, which is priced at $199, but if you're willing to take a small risk, you can purchase this Gemini focuser from AliExpress for almost a third of the price. It does the same job, and that's why I've recently purchased one for myself. And speaking of AliExpress, I purchased my TubeTech autofocuser from there as well and that has been working like a dream. As you can see on the Astro Station screen, that's what I currently have connected right now. Both mini Astro computers have a similar layout, allowing users to finely tune their settings. Next, we have storage. In terms of inbuilt storage, the Astro Station has 32 gigabytes, whilst the ASI Air boasts a much higher 256 gigabytes of storage. However, the ASI Air Plus can no longer take expandable storage, whilst the Astro Station allows for the input of an SD card. There's not too much to note here in this section, except for the heartbreaking realization I had last night, and that is that the USB port on the Astro Station is currently not in use. And since I've saved my images to the Astro Station, I have no way of getting them off. There doesn't seem to be a feature that allows you to copy your storage files off onto an SD card, which is very frustrating. I've tried connecting to the Astro Station via Wi-Fi from my computer so that I can access the folders and download the images, but I keep getting error messages. So lesson learnt, save to the removable storage. I imagine when the Astro Station is actually released, the USB-C will be available for use. I might take mine apart later and see if I can actually rectify this myself. And lastly, although they have different names, this seems to be the master tab that controls the power, storage, and Wi-Fi. 
The only difference is that the ASI Air gives you a good reading of the power input and output, which I find very helpful. Now, onto the imaging tab. This part is very interesting. Different designs, but the same core features and camera settings provided with shortcut buttons. But this is probably my biggest issue with the Astro Station. It does not utilize a live stacking feature. It also does not have the capability to later stack your images. Its services are strictly limited to right now. I find it so crucial to have an ever updating view of how your collective image sequence is turning out. Am I using the right settings? Are my images drifting in a certain direction? Should I take some varying exposure length images to compensate for the overblown core of my image? It's very difficult to assess any of this with the Astro Station. I'm sure most people will prefer to later copy their data onto their computer and stack it using a different software. Sometimes I may do the same, but I also love the ability to finish up an imaging session, bring my gear back inside and turn off all the power, but leave the ASI Air going with the request to stack not just the images I captured of a certain object from tonight, but all of the images I've ever captured of this object. I then just let it run for as long as it needs. This is a critical feature, which if it was the other way around right now and the ASI Air didn't have it, but the Astro Station did, would be singing from the rooftops about how groundbreaking this new piece of kit is. The post-processing aspect of astrophotography can be more time consuming than the actual imaging process, which is why this part is a significant time saver for me, especially since a review video like this isn't as straightforward as unboxing the product stating its features and then uploading it to YouTube. Review videos like these can take weeks, depending on the weather conditions. Sure. So some finishing notes on my experience so far using the Astro Station. It's good, and the ability to connect any Astro gear you have to it is undeniably an outstanding feature. ZWO have cornered the market in this aspect by mostly accepting ZWO gear forcing users to favoritize ZWO models. I did a review earlier this year where I compared two cameras that use the same sensors and captured images of similar quality. So in order to separate them, I actually gave the edge to the ZWO camera purely because of how portable my current setup was and how helpful the ASI Air can be. But very soon we're going to have the choice of an ASI Air or an Astro Station as our portable mini Astro PCs. In this example here, I've set up a very powerful ZWO rig versus a TubeTech based alternative each capable of producing images to a similar degree. I still think I'd give the ZWO rig the edge simply due to its larger scope, but these are the price breakdowns. Astrophotography is without a shadow of a doubt one of the most expensive hobbies to get into. In order to take decent images of our night sky, you must contribute a significant sum of money. So I'm all here for companies that offer cheaper alternatives, which TubeTech generally do on average by five to 10%. It is kind of cool to see two companies compete against one another, especially since they've taken on distinctly different color schemes. Which side will you choose, red or blue? I did specifically mention at the start that the Astro Station is unreleased, and since owning it, I've already downloaded a couple of updates. TubeTech didn't send this to me to review. I found it listed by a shop on AliExpress and decided to take a gamble. It's paid off because the TubeTech Astro Station is a very handy piece of kit that works great alongside my Shuei 17 mount, my TubeTech cameras, and a various number of different branded accessories. But this right here is simply not a polished product. The ZWO ASI Air has been setting the template for a competitor for years. Its first release was in July 2018, so this is a product line that started six years ago. It's taken a time to fix the cracks and make it as user-friendly as possible, and I feel like that's where the Astro Station is currently lacking. So, in conclusion, these are my most critical points of each of the mini PCs. The ZWO ASI Air locks users to within its own product sphere. This isn't necessarily the worst thing since ZWO products are, as a whole, very good quality products. You can almost make a lazy comparison between ZWO and Apple, another company that releases top of the line products that they refuse to allow buyers to mix and match accessories with, unless they are forced to in specific regions by the law. <clears throat> the question has been asked a lot already. Are ZWO going to cave in due to the release of the Astro Station? Will they start allowing the connection of other brands of equipment to their mini PC? We all know it's possible, and yet I suspect the answer will continue to be no. Yes, the Astro Station is still technically in its beta stage, but without the introduction of two massive features, one being an interactive sky atlas that also allows for mosaic imaging and assisted image rotation, the other a live stacking function that truly makes this a portable astrophotography computer. Without either of these two, I just don't see ZWO being too scared. To put it plainly, if you're not too bothered by the lack of a sky atlas or an ability to stack, then the Astro Station is the way forward 
especially for those of us who prefer to use more budget-friendly options when it comes to our telescope equipment. But at this point, you're actually probably better off just buying an actual mini PC and using a free software like Nina to do all of the same processes. I remote control mine from my phone inside anyways, so it's not too different from using an Astro Station. At least this way, you can once again use a Sky Atlas and a live stacking feature. So what are your thoughts? Thumbs up or thumbs down for the Astro Station? It's most definitely a step in the right direction, but with it set to be officially released very soon, do you think it offers enough compared to the alternatives of an ASI Air or an actual mini PC? I've attached links to all of the items featured in today's video in the description below. Thanks for watching and let me know what you think in the comments. I'm Damon Scotting and this was Astronomical.